Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to show you how to create a multiple choice question in Unreal Editor for Fortnite. So it looks like this. If I come into the game and there's a button right over here and I press E. Question one, what color is the sky? Green. You failed. No, that's not right. And then I go E blue that is wrong too and I press E depends where you live and I passed and that's it and this takes about maybe 10 12 minutes to do I'll be back in just a minute I think it'll be worth your while okay we're back and to get started I'm just gonna start from the very beginning we're gonna go to new project here and I'm just gonna continue loading and I'm just going to do a blank project here. I get this message about OneDrive, so when I'm on a Windows system, I would take OneDrive off your computer. Don't install it. Uninstall it if you have it. I ended up having to redo, reset my entire computer because of OneDrive. It stores stuff automatically and then it gets all weird and it, it does mess things up. It messes things up for me. So just disable it. You can still store projects on that OneDrive, but just don't have it automatically downloading off your system and stuff it's it kind of takes over things so anyway i wanted to just show you this project is called my project b i wanted to show you something let me clear my screen here when you come into this folder here you'll see these other files here if you right click you notice we can get to the user widget here if you try to right click in these other folders you won't be able to access them you'll just get the fab so just be aware of that that what folder you're in so when you're searching for stuff you probably always want to be in this top folder but when you're doing Unreal Editor type stuff, you probably want to be in this content folder. So anyway, to get started on this, we're just going to create two user widgets that's going to display our message for us. So this shouldn't take too long. We're going to go user widget blueprint, user widget, and we'll just call this WBP underscore. I'll call this correct. I don't want that. Yeah, we'll go correct. And we'll double click into this. We'll go ahead and dock this up top. We're going to search for a canvas panel here and just drag it onto the scene. Scroll out a little bit, drag it to 1920 by 1080, which is a normal computer monitor screen. Then we're gonna search for something called text, and we're just gonna drag that on there. We could also just have dragged it on top of here. And you'll notice it's a child of the canvas panel. We can set it to size to content. We probably wanna anchor it so we can put it in the center there. And that just makes sure it stays in that kind of general position. And I could just eyeball this to center it I can just drag it that way to center it too. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say, you passed the test. You are just, let's just say you passed. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the color to green and go OK. And then we can increase the text size here too. So you passed. And with it anchored like that, it should stay. You notice these values are changing. It's just offsetting it in relationship to that anchor, but it's gonna stay anchored in that position, even though it's offset. Okay, and we'll go compile and save. I'm pretty sure that's the case. We can play around with that later anyway. So now we got that message. Then we just hit Control D and duplicate it, and we're gonna call this WBP underscore fail, just so that we know what it is. And we're gonna double click into it and click the text and change it from you passed to just you failed. Sorry. <laughs> and just change it to red and go OK like that. And then we can offset this too like that. It's anchored, but it'll be offset. And then we just go compile and save that. So now we have our two messages. So good, we're getting there. Now we have two spawners. It's going to get confusing. So let's just get rid of that second one. And then we got this one here. And the next thing we're going to do is go into the top folder here, the main folder, and we're going to search for it. We're just going to get everything that we need right now. We're going to need a button, and that's that right there. So we can just drag and position that a little bit right there. Then we're going to search for the star of the show, which is a pop-up dialog device, which is amazing. It's pretty amazing. And... The last thing that we need, we have a button, and we need two. These are stars of the show, too. These HUD 
devices. These are stars of the show too. And so we've got those there. Now with these, so we don't get confused about what's what, I'm gonna press F2 on this one and name it or append it to say HUD correct. And then on the second one, you can, well, yeah, press F2 to rename it and call this HUD. I'm used to just naming underscore things and just call this fail, just so we know what's what. Okay, and since we're here with the HUDs, let's just go ahead and set them up. So on HUD fail, there's this advanced tab down here. You open it up and you scroll down here, you'll say, it'll say HUD widget. So what we have to do is we go back into our content folder. Let's clear our search bar real fast and select we're on the fail. Let's select the failed message and then just click that arrow there. And then that will pair it, that message to our HUD device. Then we'll select the past message, select the, in the outliner, select the HUD correct, and then just hit that arrow again. And now we've paired that HUD device to this message. So this message is paired to that device. This message is paired to that device. And that's all we have to do with our HUD devices and that takes care of that. Now the next thing we're gonna do, we have a button, we have, I think we have everything we need now. Yeah, so let's go into this device because this is really the main thing that makes this all happen. And there's a lot of settings in here you can experiment with later, but just to get this started is under title, we're just gonna put question one and we'll leave it centered. And the description is just gonna be what color is the sky something silly and we're going to put in here we're going to have five buttons and we can leave that all there we don't want it to auto display that's it'll because it takes over the screen when it does and the default back button we're going to put that to button b number button number five and here's where we just put in our answer responses so we can put in red green blue depends where you live okay and then under five we can just put back because that's going to be kind of like the escape button and then that's all we need to do there so now what we want to do is we want to come into the hud device here and we're on the fail and so we want to show so the, the answer on our, if I come into our pop-up, our answer is going to be, the you can choose whichever one you want, but I'm choosing number four as the correct answer, but number four. So let's just get that one out of the way first. So we'll click on the HUD device for the correct, and where it says show, we're just going to add the pop-up device here, and we're going to set it to button number four, on responding button number four. So it will show that message on number four. So then we click this one on fail and under it respond, those are all the other buttons. So we go pop up device and this will show our you failed message. So we just have to add a raise on here, the elements into the raise. We have to do this for all the, the buttons. So you go pop up dialog, set it to number two, add another one. Set it to number three. It'll pop up. And then it'll give us the choice to drill down there. So that ties all of our HUD. Someone presses button one, two, or three, our failed message will appear. I can hit save. And if somebody hits button number four, that'll be our you passed message. And then the other thing is on this, we need to go here and when we want it to be that when you press the button that it enables and shows our pop-up screen. So we're just gonna come in here and go to find the button, go button, and then just go on interact to show, and then we have to enable it too. So we'll go to button, and then we'll set that to on interact. And that should, that should do it. And that, there's a ton of settings in here you can play around with. So let's go ahead and launch this. And I'll be back as soon as it's done doing its thing. So it's just about ready to log in. It's joining the UEFN edit session right now. I'm not sure. I got to figure out how to turn down the system audio in here. 
because it's kind of overriding my voice. Okay, so here we are. And there's our button. And it should be when I press E, our test pops up. And if I hit red, you failed, sorry. This message, you can control how long it stays on green. You failed. Press E. You passed. And that's it. It seems to be working. So what I want to show you, explain to you, so you hit escape and then you got to minimize. And then this will take you back into our Unreal Editor. The beauty of this system is this pop-up device thing because the buttons on here can be then used to trigger other things. So not only can we send a message to display that you passed here, like we can send this message is going to appear when you press that button number on this device here. When you press this responding button number four, we can also then access that button from other devices so that to open a door then or do whatever, fire an explosion, send a hundred bunnies into the sky, you know, whatever it is that we want to do when we get the right answer. So we can use this pop-up device to trigger other things to happen, the score to increase, da, 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 you know, on and on and on. So it just has a ton of functionality. So what's really blowing my mind right now is that it's actually faster to build a test in here than it is an Unreal Engine. So that's kind of freaking me out right now of how, <laughs> how easy this relatively was. This would have taken me a lot longer to do an Unreal Engine than this was. This was a really quick, because the device is already built for you. The pop-up device is already built for you. If you were an Unreal Engine, you'd have to build it on the user widget. And here it's just already, it's already, the interface is already there to go. You just have to populate everything. So anyway, stay tuned. I appreciate you uh, hanging in with me because I am going to really take this to the next level in, in just a short manner of time. I'm not kidding. So anyway, I'll talk to you later.